The other day, I read on the BBC pages that CERN will look for ghost particles and that, quote, scientists think they found a way to prove whether or not these ghost particles exist, end quote. I know you expect me to say it's all bullshit, but I must disappoint you. I think it's a good idea. Let's have a look. At first, I thought the article was about what particle physicists call ghosts. These ghosts are mathematical structures that they use in some models to avoid problems with the calculation. But these ghosts are not what the CERN experiment is looking for. It'd be pretty crazy because you can't measure them. They're not real. That's why they're called ghosts. My second thought was that this is a weird way to say they're looking for particles called neutrinos because the popular science press often refers to them as ghostly. That's because they just go through everything. Yes, neutrinos also go through you as we speak at a rate of about 100 trillion or so per second. The vast majority of them come from the sun, though if you have a nuclear power plant near you, maybe you get some from there too. A little hello from your neighbor, plutonium. Neutrinos are not what CERN wants to look for either, though. My third thought was that it's a spin on this other a story about ghosts at CERN, but that turned out to be about something else entirely, namely resonances of bound states. My fourth thought was that they seem to have a lot of ghosts at CERN and maybe they should do something about it. Finally, I figured out that the BBC was writing about a new experiment called Search for Hidden Particles, SHIP. That includes particles which could make up dark matter or dark energy. This experiment has has been in the planning for about 10 years or so and the news is that it got the go-ahead. And no, it's nothing to do with the bigger collider that they hope to build. It actually won't even use the Large Hadron Collider. Instead, it'll use a proton beam from a different accelerator at CERN, the Super Proton Synchrotron SPS for short. The SPS is the pre-accelerator for the LHC, the opening act, so to speak. It reaches a fairly low energy of about 5 GV. The new ship experiment so the plan will use the SPS beam, but not for head-on collisions, but to dump it into a target made of tungsten cladded with tantalium. These are two of the heaviest non-radioactive elements. The point of doing this is that while these collisions with the target will be of much lower energy than those between the proton beams at the Large Hadron Collider, it'll make many more of them. So if there are any particles that are fairly low energy, but are produced very rarely, that's the way to look for them. This experiment makes sense because some of what I'd call the most plausible dark matter candidates are of the sort that they could find. Yes, dark matter may not exist, but if it does exist, then in recent years the evidence has noticeably shifted from fairly massive particles that they looked for at the LHC but didn't find to very light particles or axion or those making up fuzzy dark matter, which the ship experiment could find. The major the reason for this shift is that these particles all have quantum properties, meaning they are also waves. And the lower the mass of the particle, the larger its wavelength. For particles of masses so low that the ship experiment could find them, the wavelength can be the size of galaxies. Yes, crazy stuff, but true. This is interesting because that way we could get noticeable quantum effects in the dark matter stuff that solve some problems. For example, they prevent the density in galactic cores to come out higher than observed. This is a typical problem for dark matter made of heavy particles. If the particles are light enough, quantum uncertainty avoids that. The equipment of the ship experiment has been in trials for several years. It's supposed to be completed in the next five years or so and then to start running around 2030 or so. It'll of course not, as the BBC wrote, prove whether or not those ghost particles exist because you can always say they're just a little more weakly interacting so that we haven't seen them. Then again, the experiment is not super expensive, costing just about 100 million euro and it's making use of an already existing machine and it's probably one of the least expensive ways to look for a whole lot of particles. So, but could you please stop calling them ghosts? 
If you'd like to learn more about recent scientific developments, I recommend you have a look at Nautilus magazine. Nautilus is a science magazine that keeps you up to date on the most relevant topics that are being discussed today. They frequently have scientists writing for them who will tell you the inside stories. I've written a few contributions for them myself, most recently about John Oppenheim's theory of post-quantum gravity. Nautilus comes with a digital and a print version and it's just a pleasure to read. They really put a lot of effort into writing and the graphic design is top. What I particularly like about Nautilus is that they cover all areas of science, from astronomy to economics, history, neuroscience to philosophy and physics. If you use our custom link joinnautilus.com slash Sabine, you get 15% off your membership subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.